A Ukrainian general says Crimea should be covered in blood, inspiring Ukrainian soldiers to kill other Ukrainian soldiers for speaking Russian. Oh, and there is no choice except to buy Russia's Sputnik COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah, none of that is true because this is Stop Fake, the place where we break down Russian disinformation about Ukraine and a little more. So let's get to it. News sites from Russian-occupied eastern Ukraine are spreading information that a Ukrainian soldier allegedly shot and killed his colleague for speaking Russian. The report notes that this event took place, quote, during the celebration of Stepan Bandera's birthday, revered by the Ukrainian military, is celebrated in Ukraine on January the 2nd. This story was disseminated by sites controlled by the self-proclaimed but recognized by no one Luhansk and Donetsk People's Republics. The source for this claim is the press service of the so-called People's Police of the Luhansk People's Republic. Stepan Bandera was a Ukrainian nationalist leader who was imprisoned by the Nazis during World War II. He was assassinated in Munich in 1959 by a KGB agent. Stop Fake asked the Ukrainian military press and outreach office to comment on these latest Russian media claims about language conflicts. We were told by Ukraine's military command that this latest claim is yet another fake and no one in Ukraine's military had been shot by a fellow soldier for speaking Russian. This is not the first time that the Kremlin's media machine has disseminated false information by the so-called intelligence service of the Luhansk People's Republic. Stop Fake recently debunked a fake story about a Ukrainian soldier allegedly infected with coronavirus being shot by his commander and another claiming that the American coronavirus vaccine killed a Ukrainian soldier. Kremlin propaganda has long propagated a narrative about Ukraine being a fascist state, paying particular attention to events dedicated to the memory of the leaders of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists or the Ukrainian Insurgent Army. But they still get some very basic things wrong, such as the date of Bandera's birthday, which is actually January the 1st. Pro-Kremlin media have been circulating fake stories claiming that Serhii Krivonis, the former secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, allegedly complained that it was not possible to cover Crimea in blood in 2014. In fact, this statement was made by the pro-Russian political analyst Vladimir Jarala, as quoted by the Russian newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda. Similar fakes were disseminated by Polynevigator, SMI.today, SMI.media, iMag.one, and others. The Polynavigator headline of a story read, quote, Ukrainian general regrets Crimea wasn't covered in blood, citing General Serhii Krivonis' interview with the Radio Liberty program Crimea Realities. Krivonis said, Ukrainian armed forces considered the possibility of seizing our territory in Crimea, and many military units were directed to follow this plan to repel Russian attempts to seize Crimea, among them the 25th and the 79th Brigades. They were supposed to be introduced into Crimea to strengthen our forces already present in Crimea. Krivonis also noted that 2014 interrogations of certain Russian Federation operatives clearly showed that had there been clear opposition from Ukraine in 2014 during the seizure of Crimea, the operation would most likely have been curtailed. During his interview, Krivonis never mentioned covering Crimea in blood. Meanwhile, pro-Kremlin political analyst Vladimir Jarala said exactly that. Commenting on the Krivonis interview for the Russian newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda, Jarala said, quote, there is something truthful in these fantasies. Crimea had to be covered in blood, as happened in May 2014 in Odessa, Mariupol, Dnipropetrovsk, and Kiev. But the Russian army, together with the soldiers of the Ukrainian army, who went over to the side of the people, did not allow this. And they are still the only thing that protects us from the vicious hatred of our northern neighbors. Russia occupied and illegally annexed Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula in 2014. On March the 16th, 2014, the Kremlin held a referendum on the peninsula where 96.7% allegedly voted for Crimea to unite with Russia. Holding a gun to someone's head is a sure way to get the results favored by the Kremlin. Pro-Kremlin media continued disseminating propaganda about Russia's Sputnik V COVID vaccine, trying to convince Ukrainians that they have no other option but the Russian vaccine. Despite Ukraine's elites not wanting to be vaccinated with Sputnik, it will happen anyway, the publications predict, claiming that Ukrainians themselves are calling on the Ukrainian government to provide them with the Russian vaccine. Despite these deceitful claims, Ukraine's official position remains very clear. Kiev is not going to buy the Russian vaccine, and there is no evidence whatsoever that most Ukrainians want to be vaccinated with Sputnik V.
But Russian media continue to assert that Ukraine's health ministry has no other choice but to buy the Russian vaccine, claiming that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has no valid explanation for refusing the Russian vaccine. Ukraina.ru claims that sooner or later, Ukrainians will be inoculated with the Russian vaccine. It will be the same Sputnik, but under a different brand purchased through a third party somewhere in Europe. While its Vestia insists that demands made by Ukrainians for the Russian vaccine are growing, with scores of people creating petitions to that effect. Now, according to Arsen Zhumodilov, the director of Ukraine's medical procurement office, there is no rational reason for buying the Russian vaccine when there are cheaper and more reliable vaccines available. Deputy Minister of Health Viktor Yashko has consistently maintained that Ukraine will only use those COVID-19 vaccines that have successfully passed the third clinical phase trials. He also dismissed the rumors circulated by the Russian media about Ukraine purchasing the Sputnik vaccine as false. RT, formerly Russia Today, also distorted a recent interview President Zelensky gave to the New York Times, claiming that Zelensky said, it is impossible to explain to the Ukrainian people why Ukraine doesn't buy the vaccine from Russia when America and Europe are not providing Ukraine with any vaccine relief. Well, what Zelensky actually said was this, quote, of course, it's impossible to explain to Ukrainian society why, if America and Europe don't give you the vaccine, you shouldn't take it from Russia. It is impossible to explain this to a person who is dying. But we can't allow Ukraine to take the Russian vaccine, which has not passed all the tests. You and I have no real evidence that this vaccine has a 100% positive effect. Moreover, I cannot take responsibility for a vaccine, the consequences of which we do not know. As for Russian claims that Ukrainian authorities are being bombarded by citizen petitions demanding the purchase of the Russian COVID vaccine, things are not quite as Russian media portray them. Anyone can lodge a petition on Ukraine's official presidential website, and several demanding the purchase of the Russian Sputnik vaccine have in fact been lodged, 19 in fact. However, all of them contain the exact same text. One petition has gathered 348 signatures of support, the others average 40 to 50 signatures. To be considered for review by the president's office, a petition must have 25,000 signatures of support. That's it for this week. Stay safe and always be on the lookout for fakes. Wearing a mask and washing your hands and social distancing will protect you from the coronavirus, but critical thinking will protect you from Russian disinformation. And if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, send it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.